Hey gang, Rod Cummer of the East Coast Lumberjack and we got a special today. I've been saying forever we're going to test axes and show you what we do there. Well, we finally have a box full of axes. I have a man here. This is uh, Logan Kennedy from the University of New Brunswick Woodsman's team. Say hi, Logan. Hey guys, nice to meet you. <laughs> so, he's the, uh, he's the coach right now of the Woodsman's team at UMB. Of course, where I was about 30, however many years ago, we won't say how many. <laughs> um, and you can see his axe box behind him here. So, these are axes that they have ready to go for a competition. And, of course, behind him, we have five blocks of wood. Now, <laughs> we uh, had a little bit of snow in New Brunswick <laughs> over the last couple of days. It's been quite cold. So I brought these blocks inside because we don't, you don't want to run a good competition axe through frozen wood. That's, that's a huge no-no. So they've been in here. They're all thawed. It hasn't been that cold. It's only been right around zero. It was maybe a couple degrees below. But I brought them in anyhow just to be on the safe side. So we're going to show you... From start to finish, how you basically test an axe. So I'll try to give you as many pointers as I can, but we're basically going to set you here in the bench, and then you guys can watch as we uh, discuss and talk about this. Um, anyhow, and then of course we're going to chop right behind me here. I've got a, I've got a stanchion set up here, so we'll, we'll show you what to do. But the first thing you need to do is check out your wood. So we've got a two or three blocks. That's probably the nicest looking one. It's got a couple of uh, bumps, I think. Like there's a little bump there, which might be a knot. Yeah, there's some there. This side here looks pretty good. There's a bump right here, so I think if we stay down here, we're good. There was nothing in the bark on that side. No, nope. so right there. Yep. So there's uh, there's a couple little bumps. We'll put them in the top because they may be knots that have been uh, grown over. But you want nice wood, okay? So we have nice wood. The good thing about poplar knots is they're not going to cause you a whole lot of damage to your axes, thank goodness. But just to be on the safe side. So what we'll do, show you here. So there's a bump here, right there. Uh, there's two knots on this side, right there. So we'll leave them down. So this here, this looks like the best, the best wood right here. So we're going to leave it out, and we'll fasten it in here. Uh, I'm going to maul it inside here. So, never use your competition axes to bang a dog in. Pet peeve of mine. Okay. Bent a little bit. So, just just quickly for you, the first time you chop into this wood, we're going to chop at the same angle. So we're going to basically go at a forty-five degree angle. We're going to uh, chop two or three chops with an axe and basically see how deep it sinks and see mostly how free it is when it comes out. The biggest thing that drains a lot of uh, a lot of energy is when you hit a log we'll use one of my old axes first okay. just just to be safe. Um, <clears throat> when you pull it out you actually if, if you got to fight with it and pull it out you're losing a ton of time. So probably the, the biggest key that, that we're going to look at here today it's not only how deep does it sink, but also how free is the axe coming out. So the first, because this is a solid block right now, the first few swings in here are going to not perform the same as once this block is off. The next few times you hit, it's going to sink deeper because there's less resistance on the wood out here. So I'm going to use one of my old axes here first, just to make sure everything's good. And also to get rid of this chip. And then we'll test, we should be able to test six axes here. Then go to the other wood and test them six more times again. So as we're testing them, I'll show you what's going on. So, uh, I could use that old thing, but <laughs> so. 
my old Aussie speed axe. Okay, so this is, I get this from Johnny Swim in Nova Scotia. It's a good old axe, it's got a tough bit on it. <clears throat> now this log can be laying on the ground, but I prefer to put it in a stand because that way the log doesn't flop all around. I can just hold the stand with my, with my foot. So 45 degrees. And then you can see how tough it is. It's, it sticks right there because that chip hasn't come out yet. Two. Now it's lifting. There. So there's a little, whatever that was, a little bump there on the outside. You can see it on the inside. Uh, the wood's nice and wet. So that chip's gone out of there now, so we can try some other axes. Good warm. Yeah, it is. We got the heat on in here. Okay. So. <clears throat> the first axe, that axe I had there, was a one-inch chisel. And this one here, I'm going to wipe the grease off it, because we want them all to perform the same. So this is a three-quarter inch chisel, right here. Was it reground? Yep, it was reground recently. Yeah, so I thought it was reground. It may have been done by Don Lambert, I'm not sure. Yep. That's what it looks like to me, and he says it is. So I checked the handles, the handle's nice. Fits good. Um, let's see. I'm going to check the degrees as well. So, I've got this little tool here. Tells you how many degrees the axe is. So, fifteen degrees. So 15 degree, 3 quarter inch chisel. Now do you want to swing these? No, you can. Okay. So, two things. Number one, this is this out chops my speed axe. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is a good sign. My, my speed axe is a training axe. It's not a bad little axe, but you can see I've gone deeper here in two swings than I did here with four swings. Uh, it's nice and smooth, so it's chopping well, and it's free. The other thing you notice is when I hit, it came, comes right out. So that in poplar, it's chopping nice. So 15 degree chisel grind is actually a pretty good axe for poplar, as we know. And this one here likes it. So two swings. We're in about uh, two inches. So good working axe. So. There's nothing else, I think, on that one, the edge. Let's see now. Have you finished the edges? Uh, we did before last competition, but... Okay, so I would... Yep. The other thing I check on them is, is I'm checking with my fingers to see how sharp the edge is. Now, it's a sharp axe, but it's not competition ready. It, it's not biting my fingers. And what, what I mean by biting, if you run your fingers down the outside, if it's dull, it'll slide. If it's sharp, you can feel that it's sharp, but it's not biting into your into your uh, finger your uh, fingerprints. But if it's really sharp, it'll actually you'll feel it. It'll uh, cut into your fingerprints, and, and it, it just grabs at your fingers. So that one, you just need a final edge. So that's number one. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Swing that one. Brand new? Yeah, that's when we fixed the other day. Who's handle? Engineer. Engineer? Oh, okay, it's one of theirs. Yep. Okay. Another new axe. So this is a banana grind. Okay, you can see the banana in it here. Okay. It, which is a, it's a type of a flat axe because this is the same shape the whole way out to the edge. And it's an engineered for axemen. That's where they got it. So it's got one of their handles in it. It's hung well. The grain's going good. It's hickory handle. So we're going to try it see how it chops this wood. OK. 
Okay. So, it's gone in even a little bit deeper than the axe we just used. So it likes this popple even that much more. Nice and smooth, so the edge of it's... Oh, there's a little... Yeah, there's a little something right there. Has it been used before? Uh, it's when we, we used it last competition and you came and helped with it. So. Okay, right on, yeah. yeah. That one there should you just be finished a little bit more. Okay. Nice axe. So that's that's banana grind. Hill chop. Holy mac, this baby's old. Mm-hmm. Who's that? It was uh, Dave Passion. Okay. <laughs> he donated it to the team. Okay. Just for the ladies? Okay, so so I say that is the lady's axe because it's a little small. So you can see that the bit's a little bit smaller. It's about a seven inch bit. Uh, looks like uh, Don's done this as well. It's been reground, but the chisel grind axe. It's got a decent handle in it. Don't like the knob a lot, but I do like the shape of it. So same type of thing, a little bit smaller axe. Let's see how it goes in. So you can tell not quite not not quite as deep as the engineer for axman so so far the engineer for axman is going in it is nice and free coming out and i expect all these chisels are going to be kind of free coming out so for the size of it it's actually chopping pretty darn nice so that's there it's not bad not bad it won, it won two of our shows last year Oh, right on. Oh. Okay. So this, oh, good. I'm glad you got Bring in the mic. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Logan. Um, Logan's got, uh, he's got every everything we, we need. <laughs> so this one here is a miter grind, and I'm glad he's got it because two tie makes it, but very few people own them. It's got a miter out here, which is similar to a banana, but it comes to a point. And that's got a chisel on the edge. So this, this is what they would call a super grind. So it's got a miter grind in the back, and then it's got a, looks like a half inch chisel here along the edge. So, now, th now this one here, when you run your hands on the outside of it, they just run up the edge. So, so this one needs an edge. Okay, very, very, it's, it's very obvious. So, we're going to try, nice hand limit. It hasn't been used for many years. Okay, it hasn't been used, oh that's right. This one here, this is one that they actually haven't ran. So it's going to be neat to see how it performs alongside of these ones. But then again, it doesn't have a, a beautiful edge on it either. <laughs> okay, you want to be it's time to take this out of the box and run it in the show. Okay, so two things. Really free and really eating the wood. <laughs> So, and this is why you test axes, because you never know until you do which one's going to chop the wood the best. So right now, even despite this needing an edge, it's actually it's actually going in there farther than the engineer for axemen at present. So it likes popple. It just needs an edge, and we may put one on before he goes. i got to get him back in time for his interview. Man. Oh, don't blame him. I think I would, too. We've been looking at it for a while. Well, right now, it's the best one in the box. Okay, so, not another Tui. It's a one inch. It's got a one inch chisel on it. Ooh, who played with this? Uh, nice edge. I think Quinn used that last, actually. Maybe. Okay, you can see a little, you can see the little wobble out there. Mm -hmm. But it's got a good edge on it. It still has a, it still has a competition edge. Okay. Okay, so it's chopping. It's chopping pretty good. It's chopping pretty good. It's not as much as that last one. It's a miter grind, but it's it's not too far off. 
It's a little bit smaller, like it's a little bit smaller this way, um, but, but, but a nice looking eye. All of them so far have been free, which is good. So in this popple, everything's free. So what, what you do is basically, I, what I would, well, let's wait till we're done. Let's wait. <laughs> we won't pass judgment yet till we're all done. So one more axe. <laughs> so one more axe. So the bit of a rush, uh, this handle actually broke. We kind of broke the day before uh, our UMB competition. So we had one of our uh, gear managers, we call him, I guess, put a handle in it for us. Handling's a little bit of work, but it's a two-way, of course. Yep, two-way. It looks like it's a quarter-inch chisel. Yeah, it's not very big. Yeah, so it looks, looks to me like a quarter-inch chisel, so we're going to try it. This is the last one in the box. Remember that one needs to fix up a little bit through there. Okay. So, same thing. This here is a quarter inch chisel, so it's a, it's a little bit smaller chisel. Nice and free, which is good in the wood. Um, good edge. Whoever sharpened this put a, put a good edge on it as well. So, <clears throat> so, of all, so we've tested six axes. Uh, maybe I'll throw one of mine in just, just for kicks. Just to compare. Ah, one chisel. Okay. So I just reach down into my box. And this here is a this is a super grind. It's not bad. Not a bad. It's a super grind. Let's see how it rates alongside the other guy. So this is right out of my box. No, it's not there. Okay. So that's super. Okay. Is that that? So th this one here likes this wood as well. So the engineered, actually, engineered for axemen, if we look at all these and how they've chopped, they're all, they're all free, which is good. The one that's going the deepest is this one here, the super. This would be number one. Number two is the miter, the miter grind. That's this one here. And then the one before that was the engineered for axemen. So the miter grind, in my, in my mind, is number one for, for this kind of popple. Number two is the engineer for axman, and after that, you could almost go with anything. The rest of them are all fairly similar. Now, I might have sunk this one a little bit deeper, because it's mine. <laughs> and I know that I don't have to worry about busting it or anything here, so I probably swung it a little bit harder. Um, but anyways, that's essentially how you test axes. So you want to go along here, check them all out. Um, the other thing you do, because they're taking these to competitions, I check the edges. Now, mine has a really... Probably the difference is mine has a really keen edge on it, and the other ones probably aren't this sharp. So that's that's another reason why this one's going so deep. Um, my son Ben just took all of my finishing stones to the World Championships in Stuttgart, Germany. So I've got a I've got an Arkansas here that I might be able to touch up some of his axes with, and I do have a, a Norton. So we'll see what we can do here before he goes. Um, but anyways. So that's with this block. Now what we can do is take this one out and put in, I've got another one over here that's a little bit doughtier. So this one's nice and wet, so if they have wet wood, I would say go with the, with the, the miter number one, engineer for axman number two. So maybe we'll pop this out and put another, a little bit uh, punkier block in and see how they make out in those. You want to run them in this one? If we put another block in? It's up to you. Um, either one of those two right there on the ends. One, one has a couple knots, but they're in one end of it. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Both of them have a nice clean face, so. There, yep, beautiful. Okay, so this wood, this wood here is a little bit punkier, and you never know to show what you're going to get. Just like Forrest Gump says, it's like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. Okay, so I'm going to stick to this face because it's cleaner. The bark has come off of this a little bit, so we'll stay away from that. So you want to go ahead. Um, yeah, we'll open it with this. So, so just a little bit of uh, where it ran through the the delimmer. There's a couple of marks here, so I just wanted to clean that off a little bit. So this one's a lot doughtier. There. So I want to lift a little bit of a chip down here so we can see how they perform. Maybe one more here. There. So we'll stay out here. And I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let Logan run them for us so we can film him. I gotta get the heck out of the way here. I can see that. Just 45. 45 degrees. Yep. There. So so he gets a feel of how it's actually going in the wood. Nice and free though, eh? Yeah. Better stand on the block to stand behind him. <laughs> yeah, well, true. There you go. Can you see the hit? Yeah. Still really free. Yeah, well, no, they're all free. It's, they all feel really free. Which one's that? The uh, we call this one RB. This is okay. one of our one of our higher grade axes that we let usually the A team men's or A team women's team use. I think uh, last competition this guy used on underhand. Yeah. Actually, no, this one got used on standing block. RS twin got used on underhand. Yep. So we'll start the next act. So it's not a bad one. So he'll know all this here. So when he goes to the show, of course, he's got different students that are at different uh, competence levels. You know, some are, have been on the team for four years and chop really well and can hit the same place over and over again. Other guys are just starting out. So when he hands an axe out, he, he's not going to take his, his miter grind that's chopping really good. And give it to a guy that's just starting out that may actually glance and hit something. So it, it's good that he swings these. Right. Uh, now we got the engineer for Axman. This okay. was donated by engineers uh, to us last year, and UMB was the first show with it. Okay. A little loose. A little loose. Yep, so the head's a little loose, which is good to know. We'll tighten that up. Do the hit again. Yep. So nice and free. As soon as he hits it, it just comes out really nicely on its own. So because you know it may stick when you're first putting it into the wood, the other thing we use is STP, motor treatment. And <laughs> it's a really greasy, slimy fluid. And uh, we put that on the outside of the axis so that your first hit, it'll act, the axe will actually bounce right back out at you. So if you know your axe is really free in the wood, if you put that stuff on it on your first few hits, it is, you know it's going to be free the whole way through. This is the Dave Patrick pin. Yeah, it's our Boulder 2 This is one of our women's axes. I think I actually used this last year at UMB and one underhand, and then at Dow, our women's A team won standing block with it. Yeah, it's a good axe. So they're all moving the wood quite well. But it's good, it's good for Logan to see how these all work in the wood, and then the next time he goes to practice and, uh, and test his axes, he won't have to the whole way out here to Keswick and go around a closed dam. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's take a look down here right now how they're doing. I don't know if I'm swinging them as hard as Rod, but... <laughs> no, but, but which is all right. 
Okay, so so far so good. So now he's got the miter. Yep. And I want him to swing this one because it's a it's a pretty sweet it's a pretty sweet axe. Yeah, it it's cut it, it moves popple really nicely. Yeah. Let's take a look down here. Good aim. <laughs> a little better than the last two. Yep. So it's it's moving the wood nicely. So all these axes, one. Let's see. Well, I guess was that the, that was the miter. That was the miter. Yeah. So the miter stood out a lot to me, but um, and again, it doesn't have an edge on it. They're all looking fairly similar here right now. So right. I don't think I don't think the good news is he doesn't have a bad axe. Not in this batch, at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the RS. This is the twin RB. Okay. That's a refinished axe by Don Lambert. Nice. Now either he's getting tougher <laughs> and swinging harder, or that axe is chopping a little bit nicer. So, so this axe, as you can see, it's it's uh, actually the last two are deeper than the, the first few. Um, and of course, some of that might be that you're you're missing your mark a little bit, but for the most part, these are pretty good. Th this axe is definitely out chopping uh, these other two, okay? Because it's taking more wood out here in the middle than than all these ones, so not bad. And then this is our uh, we call this axe winter grind. It was uh, originally a winter grind, I'm assuming. Yeah. And it's been like a mid level axe for us. Yeah. So it's it's the quarter quarter inch. Uh, Bevel. Yep. So they're all pretty good. Mm. So that's the good news. So we need, we have. Uh, so what we're going to do here then now that we're done uh, made a little bit of a mess. Not too bad. Actually, uh, try swing in mine. Try swing in mine. I'm gonna let him swing that uh, that super grind just to see what he thinks of it compared to the other ones. Well, the students have ran this one. <laughs> yep. What's that? A lot of students left? I said I said a lot less students run this Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cuts really good. I missed my bottom line a bit, but just from the not one of the damage rods equipment. <laughs> okay, so, so that in a nutshell, and big thanks to Logan for coming out today, bringing a box full of axes. That's how you test axes. And again, you're looking for a couple of things. Number one, you can check, make sure your heads are, are solid. Check your handles, and of course we know we have one loose head, so we're gonna tighten that before it goes. Yep, and then we have one iffy handle. So we'll... One handle, yeah, looking at it, it hasn't been hung really, really pure. So that should be uh, looked at before this competition. They're all pinned, which is good. The biggest thing is you want a free axe. Now the good news is all of his axes are free. So they're going in the wood, they're coming out nice and free. So that's a really good thing. He's not gonna stick axes. If they stick, it's because they're over chopping their bottom and their heel is catching. And that did happen last show a couple times. Quite a few times. <laughs> it did. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> it did. It happened quite a few times. That's but the truth. Everybody's learning. Right. That's right. So we were in and we actually uh, did a little bit more training with them and they're, they're really coming along. So I'm expecting good things from Sir Stanford this weekend. So nice and free is one thing you're looking for. And then the next thing is ones that are penetrating the deepest or or if you hear a sloosh like a, and i don't know how else to explain it but all the guys that compete are going to know exactly what i mean when i tell them when you hear one that goes sloosh into the it really is chopping the wood beautifully now all these ones are chopping nice there wasn't one here like I, if, if i had ben's uh flat grind it would sluice through this stuff because it, it loves this poplar but that's what you're looking for okay so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to subscribe. Get these things as soon as they come out. Lots of other good stuff coming up. I just got a really neat axe on the bench from Quebec. And I'm going to show you that project and what we're doing there. So thanks a lot to Logan and the UMB Woodsman's team. And all the best this weekend. Right they're at uh, Sir Sanford Fleming uh, competing there. And of course, same time that my son's at the World. So we're hoping uh, good things for all of them. Sure. Till next time, East Coast Lumberjack signing off.